In today's video, we're going to look at how we can add a camera to this sequencer that we've already created. So let's begin. Without dynamic binding, this is the problem that we will get. So it works on this actor, where if we come across and try to play the same sequence on this actor, the camera goes back to its original position and the same issue would happen here. So that is where dynamic binding will come in handy. It will allow us to rebind the camera so it works correctly. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open our level sequence that we've been using, and these are already dynamically bound objects. So to that, we'll click on here, create a new camera. We'll just click on the camera and isolate it. The first thing we'll do is we'll get rid of this transform track because otherwise that might cause us issues. The next thing is, and sometimes the order in which you do this matters, the next thing we will do is we will click on the cinema camera actor, go to convert selected bindings, and we can either choose spawnable or replaceable, but spawnable is the easiest one. So we'll go to create new binding endpoint, and that will open the director blueprint. You can access the director blueprint just by clicking on here if you want to as well. From here, we will just say spawn actor from class, and we can pick the cinema camera actor that is built into Unreal. We'll then need to give it a transform or where to spawn. So we want it to spawn where our player character is, because that's where we will be authoring the animation. So we just need to get its actor transform. We can put that in there. We'll tell it to always spawn. And then we'll just connect everything up together. And if we break the pin, we can now send back the object and tick for it to be possessed in Sequencer. So that will spawn a new cinema camera actor for us. We then want to, we just look at it here, we want to change the transform. And we want to change the relative transform of the camera component because the cinema camera, as you look here, has got a scene component and to that scene component is a camera component. So changing the relative location of the camera or the relative transform of the camera component will give us the animations. So we can right click on here and add a transform track. We then want to right click on the track itself and change the blend type from absolute to relative. We can then add whatever keys that we want to add. So maybe first of all, I want to put it behind the player. So I can key that. In this animation, we'll just lift it up above the player's head. So we'll wait till the rock has risen. And then we can just maybe right raise it up that amount of distance. So that would be our camera animation. We can save that. We shouldn't need to change anything else. We can just close our sequencer. And then if we play, it should hopefully do the animation. And if I go this rock, it should play it there. And if I go to our fire truck, we should also get the full animation with the camera cats also being played. So that is the easiest way of doing it. In terms of the class, so you could create your own sort of cinema camera actor if you wanted to. So this is just a blueprint cinema camera actor. And then you could just change any of the settings on that actor if you wanted to. For instance, you could change the constraint, turn off the constraint aspect ratio, 
and in your dynamic rebinding in the blueprint, you could just create that as your spawnable actor. And we should get it without the constrained ratio. So that's the simplest way of binding, dynamically binding your camera to a spawned camera so that it plays at the correct location. And this allows you to reuse your sequences in this level or in different levels with, with great ease. And you can also add as fancy as camera animations as you like. So I hope that helps.